Yep, we've been a little bit busy. Um, I've done a bit of tidying here in the chemical shed and in the potting shed, keeping the place fairly tidy. And by the time you come back, it's probably going to be even tidier. And there might be a new regime and a new sheriff in town making sure that you're not messing up the place. Um, as you can see, the place is looking quite good. I've been keeping control of the weeds um, by a couple of methods. Obviously, I've been doing some hand weeding, but I've also been doing some spraying. Quick look in here. Yes, I have this nice and tidy as well, as you can see. It's very easy to keep things tidy when there's only one or two people looking after a place. But we've got wheelbarrows lined up very neatly, as you can see. I sprayed some of these weeds, so soon enough the place will look even tidier. Sprayed a good few weeds down along here around the apple trees, and the place is starting to look quite tidy down there. It doesn't look massively tidy because of the plastic, but you can see that it actually looks quite weed free. In most places. So I have sprayed glyphosate uh, on some of the areas, not the daffodils there but on this area. If I hadn't sprayed this I suppose three and a half four weeks ago now this would be absolutely covered in weeds and right up at the top and I couldn't possibly keep on top of the weeds on my own just hand weeding. Uh, so um, in these cases, maybe there's a the debate to be had about whether you use chemical control or you use mechanical control or organic or non-organic weed killers. In this case, I feel it probably could argue quite effectively um, about the use of glyphosate in limited circumstances. So as you can see, the wildflower lawn is coming on quite well. And there are some nice daisies in it, some nice dandelions, a few other weeds. And I decided at Dylan's bench and Jonathan's bench could be pieces of sculpture within the, the walkway. So let's take a walk along. Nice bench to rest. Uh, the beech tree we cut down a few years ago. Decided that could be a little piece of both art and a uh, place for biodiversity for insects that would like to have a bite and a chew and a, a house in a little area. A bit like Ashling's kind of bug hotel, but not quite as spectacular as Ashling's bug hotel. And we continue on down here and we sit in the shade of the old apple tree. As the song goes. Got the bench and the apple tree. And it's beautiful. And it's a nice place to sit and contemplate and look back up along the little zigzaggy path. This is a clematis that flowers in the spring. I think it's among Montana type um, and I think it's called Tangutica and I'm going to check that up and I'll probably put the real name on screen for you if I find out before I send the video. And the canna lilies we did a little bit of cutting and cleaning on them and have them lined out here and as you can see a lot of them are really starting to sprout and grow. We put some fertilizer on them and we're watering them quite regularly now so as they will uh, turn into big spectacular plants that we can put up on the grounds. Money maker and gardener's delight tomatoes. Daily is growing like crazy. I think you've seen them a couple of times now, but each time you see them, they're coming on a lot more. Anne is busy pricking out and potting on various different things. And we will have a video on that coming quite soon. A few more things sown. Um, these are tomatoes that kind of got a bit leggy because I didn't take the plastic off on time um, over the weekend. I think they weren't ready on Friday 
and it was a long weekend so by the time I came in on Tuesday they were gone a little bit leggy but they'll be okay their tomatoes called plum yeah so we have a few other bits and pieces and has potted on a few more of the um, various different uh, things that you guys had sown but this is uh, something I did which is an aubergine the watermelons I think Anne will talk a little bit more about them in one of the videos that we sent to you and the tomatoes and I've been doing a bit of cleaning in the tunnel um, getting ready for a lot of these vegetables to go in courgettes runner beans more of the lovely oriental salads I think I got this wrong the last time I said cauliflower but it's broccoli and some of the others you saw a couple of weeks ago but they're really starting to grow as you can see because of the time of year yeah everything's coming on great here um, I think I have a little bit more footage of this which I'll be showing you at some stage but Anne has been using the taping gun to tie up some of the uh, climbing plants such as the clematis and the lovely passion flowers um, as you will see it's these little pieces of tape and again we'll probably do a separate video showing you exactly what we're doing with that but it's just a quick whiz round they've been tied up to make them neat I suppose there's no need to tie them up culturally because normally they would twine up along the structure that they're on but in a nursery situation where you need to keep everything neat that's what you have to do yeah you would think that everybody was here only for there's no people but we're keeping the place looking good awaiting your return we've got hanging baskets up we've got beautiful wallflowers so you can smell and see the beauty as you walk in and out of the lovely horticulture timber cabin and we've got a little bit of nice uh, colour around the pond and I've been keeping the grass on my own now I used the ride on lawnmower on a part of this and you can see I've scalped some of the areas but I was trying to see how quickly I could get everything done but I did do a nice job of streaming an edge and streaming all the way around the edges of the paving let's have a peep at these tadpoles again they're all coming on and we're all looking them at them like proud parents there's still thousands of them yeah you probably remember seeing this in the last video and I said that it was called two different common names can you remember what they were one of them was bleeding heart and the other one was maid in the bath or bride in the bath and the reason why is because if you turn it up this way it looks like a bride or a maid in the bath and if I had two hands available which I don't I could pull the two sides and she'll pop up and down in the bath as if she's swimming <laughs> I'm keeping all the grass areas cut Anne is doing a lot of nursery work and I'm keeping the grass areas cut but I'm not cutting all of them Continuing on the theme of last year of encouraging biodiversity and allowing the grass to grow wild, allow the wildflowers within the lawn to grow, have a habitat for I suppose all of the bugs that were happy in the soil and in the grass. You can see I've done quite an elaborate in and out kind of splat shape. Um, I can't wait to see what it's going to be like in a couple of weeks time when everything grows so I've got a bit of an area around this tree I decided to integrate the trees into some of this around the oak tree over here sorry that makes that blurred around the oak tree and around the walnut tree I've left some patches and we've also left one around the sun locust tree or honey locust tree down the end there and as the weeks go on I'll show you how it goes and these lawn areas have received no fertilizer because we want to keep it as natural as possible 
and we're doing it on the other side too at the day center not because I don't have any time to cut the grass I think it's more for ideological reasons we're talking about biodiversity and that's the way the world is going um, and maybe one of the advantages of the COVID-19 crisis is that some of the grass areas are going to get long anyway and hopefully when landscape contractors and garden maintenance contractors come back they might consider leaving some of the grass long and just cutting around the edges maybe doing some sort of a picture frame when you cut around the edges it definitely makes it much more neat if you leave all the grass wild and long sometimes people say that looks tatty that looks untidy I don't like that but if you make an elaborate piece of art out of the leaving the grass long I think people are more accepting and they tend to kind of see the nature and the beauty within the area a little bit more readily then so I did tell you I wasn't looking forward to this job of weeding around the potatoes and as a result I left it for probably a week longer than I should have um, and now you can see no difference at the start between the weeds and the potatoes if you look I've been working at this for about 20 minutes now um, and it's quite easy using this oscillating hoe to pull out the weeds try and separate them from the soil as much as possible and to tickle in around the tubers it's not the ideal because I suppose some of the shoots of the tubers um, some of the shoots that are coming up off the potatoes are probably very near the surface and I would like not to have to scuffle around the base of them so in some cases I'm pulling out the weeds by hand there but down along the middle because of the fact that I know I have potatoes in rows because Mike and Jonathan put these potatoes in rows I know that I can weed down along the middle without any danger of um, hitting a, a potato plant so you can see I'm getting a fairly clean in around the plants a rake over the surface and a scuffle over the surface afterwards and it will be clean as anything and that's what I'm at so there you go so I have one done I've been working at it bit by bit all day on and off moving weeds from between the rows and then the loose soil in the middle I've raked up onto the the middle which is where the tubers are the potato tubers and the